Good morning, Diddy. Good morning. <laughs> you ready to pack up and go? Alright, I want to wake up your sisters. Got it. Good morning. Andy's awake. Yeah. <laughs> Andy's not awake. Good morning, Mama. Sarah's definitely not awake. Sarah's always the last. Gideon's usually first. Hey, it was today. It's moving day. After 10 years of homeschooling, school was becoming a drag. We want our kids to embrace the lifelong adventure of learning. So we decided to sell our comfortable suburban home and make the world our classroom. Joe, Trisha, Hannah, Sarah, Gideon, Izzy, and Penny Dog. We are doing life deliberately. Good morning. It's about 7.30 in the morning. I am the only one up. Well, not the only one. Penny Dog's awake. And it's moving day. And I still got some sleepy lines on my face. Uh, but I threw on the hat. And we're going to bring you guys along today for what it's like to tear down and set up on a moving day. If you buy a new travel trailer or get a used one through a dealership, um, most of them will give you a tour of your rig and show you how to do everything, but um, there are basics. And so we'll take you through today's and uh, then we'll send you home with a little parting gift. How does that sound? So come on, I'm gonna go wake up the kids now. Okay, so step one is cleaning up the kitchen for getting things ready inside. And what we try to do is to do as much as possible the night before because that just makes moving day a lot smoother. We get out of here faster. Um, so doing dishes, putting things away, um, and if possible, making a lunch the night before. Um, I got dishes washed last night, if I'm just being really real here. I got dishes washed, but I didn't get everything put away. So I've got to put those away now, and I've got to get a lunch made. So that's what I'm gonna work on now while the kids are getting up and getting dressed. So when we set up and tear down, everything happens simultaneously. While we've got things going on inside, there are things going on outside. And the kids all have different uh, chores or roles that they do to help things move along. So Gideon, what is your number one role on moving day? Uh, so what I do is I pick up my area inside and then I come outside and take down all four stabilizers. So while I go finish cleaning up inside, Gideon is going to take care of the stabilizers outside. So anything that is loose, that is not attached to a wall or tied down, has to be put away. So some examples of that would be, we have uh, this little letter board and what I do with it is I just actually leave it on the couch so it doesn't fall off the wall and conk somebody on the head. The kids are wrapping up, cleaning up the room. They've gotta make their beds and get everything off the floor. Right? So that we can sweep to pull in the slides. Those, those muscles! So now we are in the stage of things are picked up off the floor and we've got to get things swept up so that we can get slides pulled in. 
So Hannah sweeps. Um, we've got a bunch of stuff on the couch here, so we're in the process of getting backpacks and pillows taken out to the car. We've got a long car ride today. So if we are staying underneath trees, typically what I'll do is I'll get up on top before we pull the slides in and I'll sweep off the top of all the slides. We have not been able to put covers on the top of our slides yet to prevent the debris from falling down onto it. So for now, this is what we have to do. So another thing that we do to kind of help speed up the process on moving day is we put all of the lawn chairs away. Any lawn chairs, um, tables, if we have a trash can out here, we try to get that cleaned up the night before. And So something that is really important with slides is to make sure that you sweep really well underneath the slide because as the slides move in and out, any debris that is on the floor is gonna get caught underneath the slide and we want the slides to function properly forever. So as much as within our power, we try to keep it swept really well. So when I sweep, I make sure to sweep really well underneath the slide too. I'm unhooking the water. Which means you gotta turn it off first. Turning it off. It's the water pressure regulator and water filter put away. So I drain the water out of the hose. This is how we pack up every time. Yeah, that looks so incredibly hard. Just, yeah. I did the water hose and now I need a, a break. Mm -hmm. Slide three first. Come in. Getting the window. Now is the time where we have to catch all that little stuff, uh, including making sure everything on the panel is turned off, like lights and water. Now we're going to do slide three. Joe and I use walkie talkies to communicate with each other when he's outside and I'm inside. And this, these are also very helpful for when we are hitching or if we're pulling in and out of tight spaces and I can communicate with him from outside of the car. So we're gonna pull in slides now. Slide three coming in. Slide three coming in. I should also note that because we have stuff hanging on our doors, these organizers, I have to leave the doors open when we pull in slides. Uh, I learned this the hard way <laughs> within the first month or so, um, but the doors have to be open when you've got organizers on the door. Otherwise, you will end up pulling off these side pieces here when you slide out or in. So don't do that. Make sure your doors are open if you have organizers on your doors. So before we bring in the kitchen slide, it's really important to check all the cabinets and make sure that everything is closed up real well. If anything is not closed all the way, when the slide comes in, there could be damage, especially for our pantry. So I've gotta make sure that the fridge and freezer are buckled shut. These guys are pushed in all the way. And then I just double check all of the drawers, make sure everything is shut tight. Looks good. Are we good for slide number four? Slide four, good go. Go ahead and bring slide four in. All slides are good to go. So one thing that I forgot to mention before we pulled all the slides in was that you need to make sure that all the vents are closed and all the windows are closed. It is a pain in the hiney 
to open slides back up to get to bunkhouse windows that were not closed all the way or the master bedroom window that's not closed all the way and it's also difficult to get to vents if they're not closed. So just things to be aware of before you pull all the slides in. Time for electric? Time for electric. Yeah, turn off the electric first and then unplug. So this is the surge protector and it's really tempting to leave this on the ground or just right here as I put the cable away. But this is something that could be easily left behind. I've seen other uh, RVers leave behind uh, adapters, dog bones, they're called. Um, and so I, I always want to hold these together. I never want to separate them because uh, I can go put this away and then totally forget about this, getting distracted or something. We typically store our electrical cord and surge protector right inside the door because that's about the first thing that we uh, set up when we unhitch. So, and it's right there. Gideon's become a pretty awesome helper, even with hitching up, which is a super important job. All right, you're on. Play bar for this side. Sway bar for this side. We do is take out these pins. Then we insert the sway bar. Put the pin back in. Lock the pin. Giddy curl workflows. Well, we attach the sway bar. Run to take it off. Raise this up. If you can't get it on, you gotta raise it up. Right on. The sway bar has another pin on the back. Now we take the weight off the tongue. Support. Who's gonna put this one on? Oh, yeah. Emergency brake. The first, with the old one, you could actually put this one around it. It's so thick. It's around itself. Like that. Then off the big hook. All right. We're done. And now we do electric. Electric. Which I have forgotten before, not just once. And that's a problem too. Because it controls the brakes. And finally, we do propane. We're gonna pull out the chucks and we are going to remove the leveling blocks and then we can go dump. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Not hard at all. Okay, so all right, so everything's hooked up. We're ready to pull out. But the last thing I do is a final walk around just to see if we forgot anything. I'm looking at tires, tire levels. So I'm looking at the hitch here, making sure everything's hitched up. All the pins are in. I'm making sure doors are closed, slides are in. Making sure the sewer is closed. Slides are in, windows, tires. Everything's closed, closed, closed. Straps.
tires, tires, windows, doors, stairs, door. Then I do a second check of the hitch. I'm looking at the tire levels, see if there's any bulging. All right, we are good. That's the full walk around. Now we pull out. Oh wait, we gotta check the brakes. Okay. I'm coming to the back now. Joe's gonna walk you meet, and we're checking brakes and signals to make sure that everything's working right. Okay. Okay, brakes look good. Left signal, right signal. We are good to go. All right, coming back. So for our last step today, we are going to the dump station. Um, a lot of state parks do not have full hookups. And so more often than not, dumping is our last step. So we're gonna drive over to the dump station, take care of emptying out our gray and our black tanks, and then we'll lock everything up and head out. All right, you're good to go. All right, so as I pull out, so the driver's side, I need you to watch the blind side, which is the passenger side. You tell if I'm going to hit anything, okay? Sounds good. First thing we do is get the black rubber gloves. We don't have to touch any of this stuff. Then while that first gray water tank is dumping, Joe is hooking up the hose so that he can clean out the black water tank. We're just able to get a more thorough cleanse in there if he is pumping water into it as we are dumping. So this is what we have found to be the most time effective way, especially when you got somebody waiting behind you. I will shield thine eyes from the bad stuff. But he's dumping the black tank now. But you can see he's got the water hose hooked in there, so when he's ready, he'll turn that on and he'll probably close the black tank up a little bit and let that water run and just kind of fill up. And we'll do that a few times just to give it a good rinse. See, he's counting for how long to leave the water running in there with the valve closed. And then he'll open it up and let it run through again. So Joe just finished with the dumping, so I'm going to quickly lock up and then we're ready to hit the road. So this concludes our packing up. Today took a lot longer than normal, but a lot of that is because we're trying to share with you what it looks like to pack That's how much up. we love you! <laughs> so now we have probably about a seven hour drive to Durham, uh -huh. North Carolina. And uh, then we will set everything up. Well, we made it to our campsite in Durham, North Carolina at Falls Lake State Park. And the first thing that we do whenever we get to a campsite is we kind of scope things out, get a lay of the land and kind of figure out where exactly we want to put the trailer. So we're going to go look at that now. Our site is huge. There's this great big area behind where the RV goes for campfires and picnicking and... Okay, you're good. All right, I'm backing up now. Okay, bring that in hard to the passenger side now. Keep bringing it passenger side. That's perfect. You can back it straight in now. 
Okay, bring that passenger side a little bit because otherwise we might run out of room for slides on the driver's side. Okay, I'm going to swing the back towards the passenger side. That's right. There's the man of the hour. He did a good job. That was a good backing up. Yep. One shot? I didn't even have to pull forward. One shot Joe. One shot Joe. That's what they call me all around the south. I'm known as One Shot Joe. <laughs> but now we've got to level it. So we're going to see how things are as far as being even or level. And we'll adjust with leveling blocks as needed. We really love the state parks where the slots are level, but that doesn't happen very often. So uh, this is a tough call. We gotta go up on your side here. You think up on my side? Yep. Nope, up, up on, on the other your side. side. So the RV is fairly level. It's just slightly off. So we're gonna go ahead and raise it up just a tiny bit with the leveling blocks. Okay, are we good to move forward onto the Lebanon blocks? You can go ahead and pull forward. Pulling forward now. Okay, stop. Back down a little bit. Backing up. Okay, hold it there. Okay, you can go ahead and put it in park. Okay, the truck is in park and the parking brake is on. I am getting out. Okay, so we have the leveling blocks on that side. So now I'm gonna put the chocks in this side. At least at this point, we're trying to get the sway bars off first. important that I don't think anybody taught us but we've just kind of learned is that pick a spot to put your things when you're done with them and always keep them in the same place so pins we always put right back into the holes here we store the sway bars in the same spot every time these clip pieces for the sway bars we always put back in the same place Sway bar clips. Taking the electric off. Taking the chains and the emergency brake off. Now it is time to release the truck. level on the other side back here and he's watching as I'm extending the front of the so that trailer. helps us level it front to back almost there three two one stop we are level all the way around so again put the pin back where it goes now, Trisha is going to go hook up the electric. Uh, it's a 30 amp service, so we're going to have to use that dog bone uh, attachment or adapter. adapter. And I'm going to turn on the propane before I forget. Sounds good. So we have the surge protector and the cord, but we keep our adapters in the outdoor kitchen. So I'll have to grab that after I lay these over by the electric. So this is the adapter. Uh, so the power that we have is 30 amp service, which is the three prongs. And we have to take that down to uh, four prongs, which is the 50 amp, which is our RV. So I'm plugging the adapter in. Now I plug the surge protector into that. I plug the 
50 amp RV cord cable into this. Now I plug the cable into the RV. And we should have power. Should be water. So this is the water hose. We took off this morning, now we have to reconnect it. First thing I do is I'm flushing. Flushing, so I'm flushing. We are connecting the what's this water pressure regulator. regulator and the filter. Okay. Ready for another flush? The last campground had really salty water, so this is definitely going to need a good flush. Joe is hooking up the water filter to the short little hose that we have in the back of the RV here. I'll bring you around the bike so you can see what it looks like. It's just a short little connection that makes it a lot easier to connect to that water. And what else do we have, Joe? Yeah, I'm trying to connect this outside hose. What do we use that for? Uh, that's the outside shower. Use it for washing feet. Use it for the grill. And now I'm going to use it to flush the water pipes inside because of all that salt water from the last campground. So usually Gideon does stabilizers, but I decided to help so that it would go faster. It's not really going faster. everybody to help. Trisha, slide four is ready to come out. Slide four. Right here. She loves when I do that. Slide four is coming out. I'm right here. I can hear you. All right. Now we'll go over the other side. Are you ready for slide two? Yes. Go ahead and bring slide two out. Slide two coming out. When we take slides in and out, we're looking on the outside. Joe's always on the outside and I'm on the inside. And we're always on the lookout for anything abnormal. Are there doors popping open? Is there anything that's gonna catch that could get in the way of the slide coming in or out? Um, we wanna minimize damage as much as possible and we move a lot. So it's really important to do this as a team and be really attentive to what's going on. All right, go ahead and bring slide three out. Slide three coming out. Okay, I have to adjust some things on the shelf before I put it all the way out. So oftentimes with the slides, we have to bring it out halfway and make sure nothing is obstructing it on the inside. That's what Trisha's doing right now. Once she moves things from the shelf in the, in the bunkhouse, then we can bring the slide the rest of the way out. We had piano books and some fishing lures in the way. Piano books and fishing lures. Okay, let's get slide three coming out the rest of the way. Slide three coming out all the way. Bring it home, baby. Bring it home. All right, go ahead and slide one. You can bring slide one out. Slide one coming out. Setting up always goes a lot faster than tearing down, um, but our trick to making tear down go efficiently is getting as much done as possible the night before. If you do that, that will make um, tearing down go a lot faster. I think the fastest we've ever done it is probably in about an hour. Normally it probably takes closer to two or two and a half, but again, if you get a lot of stuff done the night before, then it's not so bad. Anyway, we hope that this is helpful to you and we would love to 
give you a little parting gift, and that is a setup and teardown checklist. Um, like I said before, there are things that are unique to every travel trailer, but there are a lot of things that are basic. And so we've put together a little um, setup and teardown checklist. I shouldn't say we. Joe put together a little setup and teardown checklist, and um, that has been helpful, especially being brand new to have a checklist to kind of guide the process, making sure you're doing things in order and that you don't forget anything important. So if you would like that, you can click the link in our description box below. That'll take you to our website and you can sign up for our mailing list and we would love to send that to you. We hope that you found this video helpful and we'll hope that you'll give us a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy learning adventures. We'd love to just share what we're learning um, both as RVers and homeschoolers and road schoolers and uh, hope you'll tag along. All right, see you soon. The doggy wants some money. Oh, they're so good. Oh, we will. We will. All right, let's get things continued. So the last step before we pull out of our site is to pull out the chucks and to take out the leveling blocks. You need chucks? The site. chucks? You said chucks. I did. So the last step before we pull out is to take out the chucks. I called it the wrong thing. She called them chucks. Chucks. That's not a Ooh, yeah, not those. No, not the same. Okay, so we're